What's up, podcast world? We've got an exciting announcement for you. Okay, we are hosting our fourth ever Becoming Something Live on April 11th and 12th, and tickets are live right now. Yeah, and they're going to sell out. I promise you that. Yep. They're going to sell out. So you're going to want to move fast. Go to becomingsomething.com. Buy your ticket, buy your plane ticket, get your hotel, do whatever you need to do to get to Waco, Texas, April 11th and 12th. Come hang out with us. You'll get to decide the topics. we got some fun surprises for you. It's going to be an amazing time. And honestly, one of the, the best parts is not just hanging out with us and meeting oh us, <laughs> but meeting a bunch of other BSO listeners from not yes. just around the country, but around the world. Uh, someone just emailed last week saying it was the best weekend of their entire no life. Way. I promise you that. Guys, yeah. it is so much fun and you are not going to want to miss out. So get your tickets and we will see you in April. Thanks for tuning in to Becoming Something, where we promise to keep the conversation honest and real for young adults in their 20s and 30s. Every moment we live is training for a future moment, and that's why we do this podcast, because we want you to be prepared for everything that life is going to throw at you. Our hope with this podcast is that it would help you become all that God desires you to be. So with that in mind, let's jump right in to this week's episode of Becoming Something. What's up, podcast world? It's your boy JP in the podcast studio with the youth intern Sage. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Hey, Sage? Oh, Shout out! She didn't have the the headphones on. So yeah, she's ready. And Kathy's here. Hi. And Nate's here. I'm here. Man, I'm just thinking about earlier today. We had a staff meeting, and JP made us go pray. <laughs> And then we then we come oh, back. I know, dude. <laughs> I know. I know what you're gonna say. It was. I, in, I just failed. It was in. It was because well, he's like, "Hey, we got we're, we're gonna start singing." Like, I was oh, the first I thought one. you were gonna say oh. something else. Oh no. Yeah, we I walked don't... up. I was like, "Hey," I was literally I was like, "Lord, give give me somebody who can sing." Nate That's and like... Derek walk up. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, "Guys, let's do that thing." Holy, holy! And Nate's just staring at me. <laughs> And he's wait, like, like I you want me to what? sing? And was, I'm like, yeah, uh, dude, yeah, sing. I was like, wait, are you are you, are you kidding? Are you being serious <laughs> like right now? He's like, yes. together? Like no, in front of, no, like back on our property. <laughs> and I totally failed because he like was asking me property. to help, and you didn't help do lead it? with him. And so I was who just sang? like, I couldn't tell because sometimes you and Derek, I was singing. Sometimes yeah. he just no sings, offense. man. That's an interesting combination. Yeah, whatever. Well, so I what I thought you were gonna say. Speaking of. Is how we were all in our staff meeting about to, you know, do something. Oh yeah. And then Kathy just walks, so in, walks in the room. In. Wow. And for for context, office. for context, she's usually not in our staff meeting. She's opted. We gave her the option. Stop it. Hey, you can come every week or not at all. And she said, "I'm going to choose to come not at all." Not, okay. Not quite that easy. And decision. there we were. Mm -hmm. And she's like, "Hey guys, would you mind if I joined no. you?" I, I, was, I was like, why I are you was talking? quietly sure. walking away because you didn't even. No, you weren't walking me. away. She I was, was not wa walking away. I literally had my backpack on. I was out the door, and you were like, "Oh wait, Kathy, I guess you can play." That is not true. No, to be clear, no, no, I'm not even and joking was, right now. I'm not even joking seriously? right now. No, you you were walking toward us. No, yes. I had my backpack on, you were, and I was walking on, out. Walking toward us. No, because and someone said something, so Kathy, I turned around. You literally <gasps> go. Oh, you're gaslighting me right now. I didn't want to invite myself. Yes. That were the words you I said. I didn't want to pity invite. Okay, yeah. so can I ask you a question? Yes. Did you have to turn around to say that? <laughs> yes, I turned around because you were talking to me, so I started walking towards you to you talk to you. We're walking. Do you? Did you see what happened? Nate, do not. I'm dead oh, serious. This is making me no, de so I'm dead mad. serious now. Like, I was no, trying all to leave aside. the room. You all are still joking. <laughs> Did, was she trying to leave the room? I no. was trying to leave the room, Nate. You okay. can tell the, like, tell so, the truth. So I'm gonna, I'll, I'll say that there's like, some, there's some truth on both sides, but he was not talking to you. Like, like when he saw you, you were totally walking back. Yeah, to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, I yeah, had, yeah. Oh, I, if you were, when no, you were walking out. So yeah, he didn't I know, yelled, he didn't. Nate, I literally got to the water fountain, okay. and Nate goes, Kathy, come I in here. I didn't see any yeah, of that. Totally. I yeah. didn't see any of that. Did you ask him if I could play, right? That's how it went down? Well, no, he was sitting on he was sitting on the very other yeah. side. Yeah, he didn't ask me so, if you yeah. could play. <laughs> who, who? So I, I for sure yelled at you. I was like, Kathy. Yeah, that was nice. But, so I came yeah. in, and then I thought you had asked him if I could oh, play. I, oh no, I, <gasps> I pick up at 
you saying, I, I was like, hey, Kathy. And you're like, I didn't want to invite myself. That's where so I you like, actually I, really thought I, invited I didn't myself. acknowledge you. I didn't even know you were there till that moment when you're walking toward For me sure, yeah. saying, I didn't want to invite myself. And I'm like, well, so you did. No, <laughs> I walked out of the room because you didn't say anything to me at all. I didn't see you. I was literally 40 sitting, people in the room. I didn't I see in Kathy. The, table. the world's not about you. But you walk in a room and there's someone in there. You should say hi. And you, you should didn't. read Chad so Beach's book. I feel book. awkward. <laughs> I feel awkward. Chad I get wrote my a book stuff. for you. I start to walk away. I get out of the room, and Nate says, Kathy, come back. And I thought that meant I had permission to play. Oh, yeah, I didn't. I, I didn't. Nate, I'm you in didn't charge. ask anyone? No. I, are y'all are joking me I right promise now. you, Nate didn't say I one thing to me. I truly thought I heard Nate say, she should play, right? And you're like, yeah. And then you wave me over. I did not see so her So I really that. invited myself <laughs> into this game. I'm so <laughs> I did, All I saw was you walking I'm toward sweating. us. Like coming in, like like real comfortably, and I was like, "Oh, Kathy's gonna." Shut I mean, up! That is but, so embarrassing. Well, here's what I would say <gasps> to alleviate your embarrassment. I didn't I didn't think it was weird. I was, I was kidding. I'm totally. giving you a hard time, but I didn't think it was weird. I was like, "Oh, she wants to jump in. That's great. That's what oh, I thought." Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> I'm so mortified. Just, I just love that we worked all of that out on the air. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were really gaslighting oh, me. Man, to oh, man. That's make so a story good. Up. That is so I thought good. I was invited, and I do not like inserting myself. No, so now it's I'm fine. Embarrassed. It's fine. Wow. <laughs> Are you glad I came? Oh, that's yes. so awkward. Yes. Oh. No, I am glad you were there, Kathy. That's not what you told me. No, that because is Because you were like, I'm, hey, no, I'm so bad she true. came. You can't. No, that I did person, not say I, like, that. invites themselves to things. It's fine. Oh. It's fine. I just became her. It's totally fine. It's all good. We're uh, talking about today. Can we just? <laughs> <laughs> this is the best intro ever. Everybody's gonna be bored out of their mind, but I'm rather uh, amused. Yeah. I just, I was like, wait. I thought you were gaslighting me. I was totally. like, I never saw you walking the other direction. Are you? Like when I saw you, you were you walking towards. The room us. That's to funny. I didn't know you were there. I really didn't. Man, Nate. that's happened to me before. Like somebody called. And they were really angry. I went to a, I went Dude. to a kid's birthday party, a kid like like yeah. Weston when he was young, like man, like four years old, was invited to a birthday party, and I go, and and then I get this like lengthy email afterwards, like you didn't even acknowledge me, and I was like, I don't know who you are. So how do you hand? This is not what we're talking about. But <laughs> how do you really not. how do you handle when people are like, you miss their expectations? I feel like that happens more and more. Oh yeah. Like. Where I'm like, oh, man. leadership is a like, commitment want, to being misunderstood. I, I, I want to help. I yeah. want to see you, yeah. but I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe we can talk about that. Or later. it's like, or like if you're, if you're, you know, if you're legit, like if if I'm late to a kid's game, yeah, and someone says, "Hey, I was just wondering if you could pray for me," and yeah. you know, it's like, come on, for sure. Say, hey, I want to. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna pray for you as I go to my car. Um, I'm on my way to my kids game and I'm running late. It started. I know. And so it's like, you're choosing who you're going to disappoint. And then that person is like, man, he was such a jerk. I I tried to, I just asked for like the story right Right. behind my back is I just asked for prayer. Yeah. I just asked him to pray for me. He, he couldn't even make time for that. And it's like, yeah, it's, it's hard. Yeah. Hey, you do the best you can and sleep well and trust the Lord. And you just, you want to love people. Like I, I you know, you get into this because you genuinely love people, right? And then as the, as the, you know, with, with size comes complexity for sure. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, totally. you wanted other people to be on the podcast. Yeah, I was like, well, what's, what's wrong with us three? No, yeah, yeah. Well, he thought one actually invites that themselves you were to me and the other one. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. When we started the podcast, you're like, Nate, it's going to be, it's going to be us <gasps> no! two. Yeah. And then. All of a sudden, we're oh, just in the yeah, office, and then that. Kathy's there, and no, it's like, I remember hey, that. I? I literally walked in and said, are you sure you want me in here? Whatever. No. Gosh. All right. So we got no, the people. Did anybody, let me just ask you this. Did anyone call in and leave a message? Really an overwhelming amount. <laughs> so many <laughs> that you stopped listening. Nate's literally like, hundreds. Like, Nate's like, dude, like, I can't, this would be my only job if oh, I just listened to all of A hundred percent. Like, I log in. I log in after a couple of days, and it's like. Oh, they listened. They <laughs> awesome. to go. What's the number? Like Do you know it? Uh, not off the top of my head, but I can get it very, 281 very fast. 8 That's kidding. That's don't. Mike Jones. Oh, okay. I was like, don't give out fake numbers. That's Mike Jones' number. 
Christian they, y'all don't even that, that's a total like okay. millennial. Yeah, I'm, I'm a Christian. Wow. So. Millennial Jones. reference. You, you guys are too. It's too cool though because I thought we had gone through every topic, and here we are with hundreds more yeah. to choose from. This two, podcast will never end. Two five four. Two five four. Two one eight. Two one eight. Three seven. Three seven. Eight four. Eight four. Two five four. Three one eight. Two one eight. Oh man, sorry. Two five four two one eight three seven eight four three seven eight four. You should get two five four two one eight three seven eight four. Yeah, wow. That's like the most difficult number ever. No, yeah. Y'all couldn't. Not, not a lot of we need to make that spell something. <laughs> should we spell oh, V? Totally. though? we got to figure out how it spells. V something. Nate. No, it's not the Nate. Don't don't text that. So, yo, leave us a voice memo like these friends. So, so we I have think we some, right? can to we listen, listen to a, a guy and a girl. Can you play the guy first? Hey, so um, with everything going on in the world nowadays, a lot of Christians are talking about um, how the end is near and the end is coming. And and JP, even on your Instagram, you talked, you mentioned how you think it's going to be twenty thirty three and I don't know if you're being serious about that or not, but um, I guess my question is a lot of Christians are super anxious about um, Jesus coming back and the world ending, and they don't really know how to feel about it. So my question is why, as Christians, should we be excited for Jesus to come back, and why should we not be anxious about the whole thing happening? But, uh, yeah, thank you, guys. Mm, that was good. Yeah, so let me just set the record straight on the 2033 thing real quick. So it's like I, I, people who in my position have always said for ages and, and generations, you know, Jesus is coming back. And I'm like, I, I can believe that he's coming back in 2033 in a hopeful way. Like I'm not handing out Kool-Aid or like standing on top of buildings or even with a sandwich board in New York City. I'm like, hey, I've got I've got reason to believe that something significant is going to happen around the year 2033 and then people say well no I'm one knows hit 100,000 Instagram followers no one knows the hour or the time the hour of the day and I'm like yeah that says the hour of the day it doesn't say the year I think something significant is going to happen within the 365 day time period of around 2033 I may be wrong and I don't like it's okay if I'm wrong I'm not going to do anything different like I'm going to continue to share the gospel and whatnot and so it's like I don't even know why that's so interesting to people, but let, I, I want to talk about it on the pod. Do we have a, I think a, somebody else wrote in with a, a or not wrote in, but called, in. called, in. called yeah. in with a similar question. Hi, JP, Nate, and Kathy. Hey, what's up? Um, I have a question for you <laughs> guys, and I don't know if I've ever heard you guys speak about it before, but I've had like Minnesota. so many yep. people come up to me and tell me, like, obviously we're in a season where like Jesus is probably coming back, and like we're kind of preparing like our hearts and like minds and like he's coming back our for spirits sure. for that. <laughs> to be clear, um, I've had people like approach me and say like we need to be preparing physically as well, like storing like food, like medicine, oh. like water, like that oh, yeah. kind of stuff. Preppers. And I'm just curious what you guys think about like preparing physically for Jesus coming back. Like if that's something that we need to worry about, if it's something that we should be telling other people to worry about. Personally, it kind of stresses me out. Like, I barely have enough money to, like, Aww. have food, like, week to week. I don't know how Dang. I'm supposed to be storing to up, turn, like, take up an a bunch of, like, stockpiles of food, let alone if I should even be worrying about that. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think about um, that. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Thank you. Bye. Okay. I not Okay. That. All right. First off, we should play a game like Guess Where They're From, because totally. Homeboy was from the South. She's got to be from your home. Alabama and Minnesota, yeah, I bet. Sure. Wow. Do we know? Well, I bet we could look at the their area codes. I'm yeah. surprised. I was expecting them to be like, hey, this is Jim Sorry. Bob. From, Next time, do yeah, it. Some do. Say, hey, I'm Kathy from Waco, Texas, and here's my question. What's up? It's your boy. And, and prefer, like, I noticed how she said JP, Nate, and Kathy. If you said, like, Nate, JP, and Kathy, yeah, then it's more likely not you're going to be on the, yeah, you're not gonna not be on the deal. So just be mindful of that. So. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a lot to talk about. Okay, so it's like, why should I be excited about? Which is, I don't know. That's but like, I was a little confused by that question. And two, should we be like storing up stuff? Okay, so the first one, like a real thing, is like, man, I want to have sex before Jesus comes back. <laughs> you will, buddy. I'm like, you will. I just, I want to. I believe, I believe that you will. <laughs> I didn't think that was what you were going to say. Hey, that's. 
That's what that's that's what the guy's asking about. <laughs> you think that's what he was asking totally. about? Totally. Yeah. That that's where your mind went. That's where your mind <laughs> you were like, went. oh, that's this is a brother is. wouldn't have sex. I took it as like he wants to travel the world or have kids. Like as soon as he thought, he's like, oh. I'm super anxious about Jesus coming back. Oh. <laughs> that, 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 Man, why are you the way that you are? What's wrong with oh. you? Guys? Oh, I, man. I'm, I apologize to whoever that was <laughs> that Nate interpreted it that way. I don't that is feel not like what that's what he asking. was saying, man. <laughs> no. I feel like he was He talked about saying, anxiety related to it. I think he was thinking it. about yeah. lost there's people. So yeah. there's like, just, there's so many lost people yeah. just, that I want in heaven. Or there's, there's a lot of other people that called, and we just didn't, we didn't put those in <laughs> oh there. So goodness. when Nate's been asking questions in the past, and he's like, oh, this person has a question, oh, have they all just been his questions? Probably. <laughs> Wow. What if I want to have sex before? He's got children, <laughs> guys. Yeah, he's done it. Oh, Good man. job. Jesus okay. can come back. Okay. Uh, I thought it was interesting because it was his question was like, um, you know, how do we like be excited for it? And his like reverse was anxious about yeah. it. Why do you think people are anxious? I think both it? of those questions, it's related to, I mean, the reality sex. is there's lost people, lost people, yeah. like unsaved people who are going to hell. And that's what, you know, um, Second ex- Peter 3, yeah. 9, God says, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promises. As some, some understand slowness. He's patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. And so that that patient with you part, I think, is like, hey, he's patient with us to share the gospel. Mm-hmm. The scripture says that the the gospel will be preached. The word will reach the four corners of the earth. I know it's a sphere uh, until I know some of you don't think so, by the way. That's a whole nother podcast. Uh, until you know, and until uh, Jesus won't, re- Jesus will return after the gospel's been proclaimed forth. Uh, Matthew 28, he says, go into all the nations, uh, teaching them the things that I've taught you, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and lo, I am with you always. And so there is this, like, we have to go and reach lost people, and that ushers in the return of Jesus. And so I think that is that is where we're at right now. I believe in our lifetime, even in my lifetime, I'm older than many of you listening, in my lifetime, the Bible is going to be translated into every existing language, okay? So cool. That's crazy. That's never happened before in the history of history, and that I think that's coming in in the the next uh, several months or years, and and so wow, like AI is changing the game on that. You know, this what the enemy meant for evil, God uses for good, and so C.S. Lewis says, so great is something's potential for good, equally great is its potential for evil. I think that's true of artificial intelligence. And so I hope we use that to interpret the Bible in every language and to reach the four corners of the earth, ushering then, allowing Jesus to return. And so I think a right concern is not, will I have sex? Will I get married? Will I get to walk my daughters down the aisle? You know, will I do this? It's, man, I, I just hope that, you know, the gospel reaches my friend mm-hmm. before Jesus returns. I hope the Holy Spirit changes uh, my, you know, my, my family member's heart before Jesus returns. That's a rightful concern. Yeah. And, and so that goes to the second question of, you know, should we have storehouses of grain? Yeah. Should we, yeah. should we be, should we be prepping? Should we have, should we invest in the under, uh, in the bunker? And I would say only for the purpose of leveraging that to share with others. So you know, who's doing that like crazy? Do you guys know? No. The church of Latter-day Saints, Mormons. Mormons really? are stockpiling, you know, they, they're, they're prepping. Really? Yes, for, for difficult times so that they can be, it's an evangelism strategy. Oh, for difficult so times. So that they can be a safe haven uh, for when, you know, in a post-apocalyptic era, that era that people can come to them and, um, and they can, you know, share their, um, their message with them. And so, yeah, as Christians, should we be that? Sure. Should it be so that we can survive and no one else? I'm like, no, we love our neighbor as ourselves. So anything that we store, it's not a, an act of selfishness. It's not an act of self-preservation. It is an act of caring, figuring out how to care for others. So to my friend, in, in all seriousness, who is struggling financially, like, I think you can breathe easy. Yeah. Like, the best thing in your situation is Jesus returns. And so it doesn't mean don't work. Uh, it doesn't mean, you know, kick up your feet, take life easy because Jesus is coming back. No, I would say I would say make I would say get after it because Jesus is coming back and make sure all of your coworkers know the gospel and make sure everywhere you go, you're advancing the kingdom. 
Because when Jesus comes back, right, like, we don't need to worry about having enough things. It depends on your eschatology. Like, it, uh, you know, are we left behind for the thousand-year tribulation? Is is there is that going to be a really difficult season of judgment? Or is it like a thousand-year jubilee where, like, Jesus reigns as Lord and we get to yeah. we get to enjoy the kingdom here on earth? Or are we raptured? And, yeah. and as soon as you know Jesus comes back, we're caught up in the sky with him. And there's disagreements on this. This podcast is not to drive to totally. a specific conclusion <clears throat> of exactly what's going to happen next. And I would just, it would be uh, me holding it so loosely in my hands that, hey, I just believe he's coming back. And so people say, do you believe in the imminent return of Jesus? Imminent meaning that he could come back at any time. Totally. I would say absolutely. But here's what I mean by that. Okay. I do think the gospel has to reach, yeah. you know, everywhere for Jesus to come back. But I, but I don't know when that's going to happen. I think yeah. there's a really good chance that he comes back right when that happens, yeah. you know. And it's like that happens, and then boom, he comes back. So uh, in that way, I believe in the imminent return of Christ, that at some point, any moment, like I may not make it through tonight, Jesus could come back. And if it's a 1,000 years from now, that's okay too. Like yeah. the, the, hold, please hold on to that sound bite. Like it, I know I'm reading the same Bible you do. I yeah. don't have any... <laughs> Um, you know, is it on this particular topic? I don't have any divine inspiration or or knowledge that's not available to you. We're reading the same source, and so it may be a thousand years. We may sit in that. Um, it, there's other reasons, like people say, why Jesus comes back. I'm gonna, I'll tell you right now. Like, why do I think he's coming back in 2033? Have I said that on the podcast? No. Okay. Nope. Let me say it right now. There were from from Adam to Abraham. So Adam and Eve in the garden. God created man. From Adam to Abraham was 2,000 years. So two millennia, two millennia where, uh, and then between Adam and Abraham, okay? From Abraham to, so in there you've got Noah, you know, you, you have the flood, God destroys, all these things happen. So then from, from uh, and, the, and by the way, there's evidence to support this too, and it's, it's the same timeline that's in the scripture. Then from Abraham to Jesus was 2,000 years, okay? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? And then from Jesus to 2033, if Jesus, you know, was ascended at the age of 33, so from Jesus to 2033 was 2,000 years. And I'm saying this roughly. Somebody might be like, oh, no, it would actually be 1998 years or, yeah. or um, you know, 2004 years, like um, roughly 2,000 years, yeah. right? And so um, then the scripture talks about kind of six days, the d a day is like 1,000 years to the Lord. And so Revelation speaks to this time period of six days, and then the, the Lord returns, and there's another reign for a thousand years. And so if you think about it like a week, so you've got six days, mm -hmm. each of those day a thousand years, and then something happens on the sixth day, and then there's another day, which is another thousand years. And so for those reasons, I don't know if, if that makes sense because there's no visuals right now. If that makes sense at all, like that's why I think the year 2033 is significant. But I may be wrong, and it's okay. I'm not doing anything different. Like I'm not, yeah. I'm not like going crazy about it. I'm not, you know, you haven't even heard me like, like, like it, I'm not doing even a sermon series on it. I'm just like it's interesting to me. And so if it's like I, I'm in the, I have the privilege and the benefit and the and the responsibility of getting to share my opinions with others. This is firmly in the opinion category. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you, like you can disagree with me, and for sure, I mean, most people probably do disagree with me, and that's great. Yeah. But doesn't that scare you? Like, it's so unknown. Like, I think that's what's so like nerve that's nerve wracking comes about in. is yeah. like I don't know. Like, Revelation is scary. Like, I. In the I don't fact know. that even just you saying you, there's like so many different camps. It's a thousand years tribulation, or a thousand years jubilation, or it's a rapture, which that feels kind of freaky. Like just not knowing what that's gonna look like. That's, that's life, man. Your 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 control is an illusion of you know according to the will yeah. of God. Meaning, like you have no control. Yeah. Like like God can touch your heart right now, and you can die. And so it's like, why be overwhelmed by that? It's like you go on a roller coaster and you're like, oh, it's so scary because I don't know what's next. Or like you're, you know, how roller coasters go click, 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 click up, up the thing. And then it's the scary because it's like, what's over the yeah. arch? You know yeah. that? It's like, that's your life, man. You are on the click, click, click of the roller coaster your whole life. You don't know what's around the corner. I mean, it can be, you know, devastation and heartbreak and heartache. And, or it could be you win the lottery and, you know, whatever you consider to be great news. 
We don't know. And so you might as well throw your hands up and enjoy the ride and just make sure you're walking in faithfulness to share the gospel with as many people as possible. Yeah. Don't be anxious about anything. Hey, is that fair for me to say? Don't be anxious about anything? But there's so much to be anxious but about. But is it okay that I'm saying don't be anxious about anything? Yeah, it's I mean, scripture. But that's because just, but it is the Bible. Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, present your request with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So, like, live that out. What's up? No, it's great. No, what were you going to say? Say it to my face. <laughs> I think what's interesting about this is... Even you saying he could, you know, your guess is 2033. I'm like, that's how many years from now? What year is it? 2024? It's nine years. Did I do the math right? So in your perspective, are you going to do anything different no. in those nine years? Let me say it again. No, I'm not going to do anything different. That's crazy because I would think to most of our listeners, they're thinking, okay, well, if that's true, I've got nine years to do this, 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 and this. Like what? Well, have we already sex? know what Nate thinks. <laughs> I, I, I know. I, I've got, you, Nate, you have nine travel, years. Travel. Pursue a career, you know, fall in love. That's so dumb time. to me, man. It's like the you Cowboys like won a heaven. Super Bowl. Yeah. Oh gosh. my gosh. Oh man. Cross off things off your bucket list. <laughs> Heretical. Guys, Jesus I, no, is coming back. I'm how just do you? Saying, how do you? I just don't know how you can say. Why are you so excited about that? It's he's like we get to get, we get to experience the kingdom of King Jesus. Like, you don't understand, you've never experienced a place where there's no heartbreak, no heartache, no sadness, no cancer, no death, no disease. I mean, no disappointment, no missed expectations. What happens in heaven is all your expectations are exceeded at every turn yeah. Yeah. for the rest of the yeah. rest of the rest of the rest. It's unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. Nobody, nobody gets to heaven and is like, why didn't the Cowboys win the Super Bowl? Or even, why didn't I have, you kept me a virgin down there? Are you serious? No, no one's man. Thinking it's about like any of that. that thing that you. I mean, here's like the thing that people will say <laughs> is heretical and be misunderstood, like orgasm. Like if that's the greatest natural um, amount of pleasure you can experience under the sun, the, it's like the floor of pleasure in heaven. Like everything in heaven is better than that. That's what I don't think you. Un that's what you're. People are like, oh, I'm missing out on sex. Like, no, you're missing out on heaven, the yeah. fullness of the presence of God. It's funny if, like, if you were, I, I could make a biblical case for that too. By the way, if you were going to Hawaii on vacation, like this amazing resort, I wouldn't hear you say, "Dude, I'm, so, I'm like really anxious about it." It's yeah. like this is gonna be awesome. Yeah, yeah. Like this is gonna be. I'm yeah. going to Hawaii. I like the beach. We're gonna go on a mountain. There's a the, resort. It's the equivalent of me saying. So it's like me saying, yeah, I'm going to Hawaii on, on to this amazing resort, all inclusive. Yeah. It's incredible, uh, and 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 I'm and 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 you're like, man, I'm so I'm so sorry, uh, you you didn't get to to visit, you know. Yeah. the garbage dump first yeah, right. and i'm like the garbage dump and you're like yeah man it's really smelly and you know i'm just sad you didn't get to see it before you go to hawaii <laughs> and it's like like I it doesn't that, even I it doesn't even so make good. sense yeah, dude yeah. it doesn't even make sense right we get so caught up in the like unknowns of how it's going to happen that we forget like that's what we're focusing on versus yeah. like no more tears People, no more crying everything being uh, made right and if you're like are Jesus. you are you calling are you saying my wedding are you comparing my wedding to the garbage dump compared yeah. to the wedding yeah. feast yeah. of the bridegroom of mm -hmm. jesus christ it is like that that's like good. that's the crate the best day of your life is is worse than the worst day in heaven. Yeah. That's so good. Dude. Right. Dude. What what about the fear of man? I don't know if I'm getting in. Like I st I've still got sin like Yeah, man. Am I, I really I, saved? Yeah, it's like I'm, I mean 2033. I got to clean myself up before I'll that. be honest. I'm not <laughs> oh sure either, gosh. Nate. I mean, I'm hopeful. I'm hope all I can do is surround you with the gospel and and just can let you know let for God sure do what you're God the does. one like going to get in. Like, can you know for sure? I mean, First John five thirteen says you can. It says, "I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life." And so, if that word "no" means no, Scripture seems to say that you can know. And you say, "Well, how?" It's so you 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 trust in Jesus. Romans ten nine says, "If you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved." Ephesians two eight nine says, "For it is by grace." You have been saved through faith. It's not of yourself. It's the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. So if we take God at his word, we can be confident that we're going to be with him forever so that we can be hopeful, not anxious. 
Like I, that's what I want to happen is for your anxiety to turn to hope. And by the way, there's a really thin line between anxiety and excitement. Uh, experts will say, huh. like if you're anxious about like a speaking opportunity, they would say, think about, like imagine yourself doing it really well so that that anxiety will cross over to excitement. It's a really, really th uh, psychological thin line between anxiety and excitement. And so I would just say, like flip the script on that. As you're anxious, understand, like grow your heart around the knowledge and the information of why it should be excited, that you should be excited that that Jesus is coming back and that you're going to be with him forever. And so, you know, f for those reasons, you can know, you can be confident because you've trusted in the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. I'll say it like this. Every sin's going to be paid for. It was either paid for on the cross. Uh, have we? Have I said this before on here recently? Not recently. Your sin, listen to this, your sin was against an eternal God. Okay? So your sin, when you did the thing, said the thing, smoked the things, whatever you did today, you know, your sin was against an eternal God. So that sin requires an eternal payment. You can pay for that sin yourself in eternity, yourself, right? That's what you do in hell. Only one thing to do in hell is to suffer for your sins forever. Or you can believe God paid for that sin on your behalf, his eternal son on the cross, paying for your sin against an eternal God. Every sin will be paid for either on the cross or in hell, and you get to choose. Do you believe God paid for it through Jesus Christ, or do you want to opt to pay for it yourself in hell forever? But if you believe that God paid for it through his son Jesus Christ, then you're going you're gonna to be with God forever in his kingdom. And the confidence of that, the courage of that, the Holy Spirit aspect of that begins today. You don't have to wait for heaven to begin to walk in the confidence of the Lord mm. here on earth. So if we know Jesus and we're a believer, and you've already said we don't need to be anxious about Jesus coming back, we don't need to prep and get you know all the toilet paper and water bottles, how should we be living in anticipation that Jesus could go back at any time? Is there anything we should be doing? I mean, Second Corinthians 5, I think. He says, since we know the fear of the Lord, since we understand what it is to fear the mm -hmm. Lord, we try to persuade people. Okay. And so if we understand the fear of the Lord, I mean, Jesus says in Matthew 10, you know, don't be afraid of man who can only kill a body, but be afraid of God who can send a person to hell. Um sin both body and soul in hell and so we try to persuade people and compel them into a relationship with jesus christ like that's our job mm. like that's our job like remember you, you know i i hate the phrase you can't be a christian if yeah right and remember when you sharpened me on that you said hey you kind of said that like you can't be a christian if you don't share your faith and and i would just say you can't live as a christian if you don't share your faith you can't be following jesus and not share your faith. That's the scripture's clear that as Christ followers, we are to share our faith. That makes sense. So yeah. that's what we do from here until 2033 or <laughs> yeah. beyond. Or 2000 or 3033. I just, I think something I really admire about you is the fact that. Oh, well, let's take some time on this. <laughs> yeah. You've been asked on Friday QA. Like, if you knew Jesus was coming back today, what would you do? And you're like, the same thing I'm going to do anyways. I'm going to hang out with my family. I'm going to yeah. go to work. I'm going to share the gospel. And I'm going to pray and yeah. go to bed. I mean, I, I probably would. I mean, I say probably. I imagine if I would knew, if I knew yeah. it was tomorrow, yeah. I would be more patient. Mm. I would be more kind. You know, I'd probably be less sarcastic. Yeah. Um, so I think that, I mean, I, there are, I, I still sin. Yeah. You know, I still do really stupid things at times that I regret. And so I imagine if I knew Jesus was going to come back tomorrow, I would I would be on my best behavior. Um, but right now I want to share the gospel with everyone I can, you know. But I think that's something I want to, like, walk into. And I hope any of our listeners is like, man, Jesus could come back tomorrow. So why not, like, be living the way that you want to live? What would y'all do different? If Jesus, if you knew Jesus was coming back tomorrow, what would you do different today? I, I was just thinking. Run around I, and, well, you go. Sorry. I don't know if this answer is for me, but, like, just making sure that, like, when he comes back, like, I know him and he knows me. Mm. Like, I, I, it shouldn't feel like, man, here's this long lost person who I, my parents told me about. <clears throat> but it's like, no, I, like, I know Jesus. Jesus knows me. I've been walking with him. Mm -hmm. Um 
anything else I'd do different, dude, I, I quit. <laughs> you take the day off. <laughs> yeah. Take PTO I'm and like, go get some Chipotle. Yeah, I think I would like spend time with my family. I, I hope PTO I would. I know and I go would get some Chipotle. <laughs> try to go share the gospel. That's your last meal on earth. <laughs> no, I don't know what it would be. I feel like Chipotle needs to send us some gift cards Dude, or something. Totally, that'd be great. I, I do think an anxiety for a lot of people is that there's so many people they love that don't know Jesus. That's I real, think man. I would be making some calls. I would be like begging people with the fervor that I don't yeah, think I. That's real. I mean, that's real. I'm, I'm, I would do that. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm sure I'd call some specific folks, yep. um, you know, in my family and have really clear yeah. conversations. So, yeah. Mm. I mean, the sad thing is they probably <laughs> probably wouldn't work. You know, right. it'd be yeah. too late. Right. If you called them, like if you knew Jesus, was, this is profound to think about. If you knew Jesus was going to come back tomorrow and you start calling lost people and you go, hey, here's the deal. I, he's coming back tomorrow. I'm certain of it. You need to trust in Jesus right now. They're gonna be like, "Oh man, yeah. they really yeah. gone off the deep end." Yeah. Totally. Drink that yeah. You know, and that's why you can't wait till then. Yeah. You got to do, do it, it today. today. Yeah. You got to do it when you don't know he's coming mm-hmm. back tomorrow, because when he comes back, it's too late. Yeah. yeah. I mean, think about that. You can't. You, it will be too late if you knew he was coming back tomorrow and you started working down the Rolodex yeah. or the the cell the it's iPhone. Yeah, it's too late. You think we'll have becoming something live in heaven? Like, oh. Will he let us record? Oh my gosh. And I think we're gonna be. I think we're going to be really distracted in heaven. Doing other things. I really do. I think the glory of the Lord is going to be all around you. Mm. And it's going to be amazing. The, but like, even when you say that, I'm like, I don't know what that means. Yeah. Well, just get to know God better. <laughs> Spend no. more time with him. All right, guys. Something thanks for there. listening to us for the past 33 minutes. We love you guys, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Maybe. Thanks for tuning in to Becoming Something, where we promise to keep the conversation honest and real for young adults in their 20s and 30s. Every moment we live is training for a future moment, and that's why we do this podcast, because we want you to be prepared for everything that life is going to throw at you. Our hope with this podcast is that it would help you become all that God desires you to be. To find out more, visit becomingsomething.com.